Hey gang, in today's video, let's cover collection variables in flow. But first, a quick refresher on regular variables. So a variable is like a container that can store a value or a data point like a number. And you might recall that a variable can store lots of different types of data, including numbers, dates, text, Salesforce records even, and a lot of other different types of things but a variable can only store a single one of those data points at a time. That's where collection variables come in. A collection variable is a variable that stores multiple data values at once. You can have a collection variable that stores multiple sets of numbers or multiple text strings or even multiple Salesforce records, which we'll get into in another video. So how do collection variables work? Collections can store any number of items. So you may have a collection variable that has a single data point, much like a normal variable, or several data points or thousands of data points. You can even have collection variables that are completely empty. But while collections can store any number of data points, they can only hold data values of the same type. So for example, you'll never have a collection variable that stores a number and also a text string. With collection variables, you can add or remove individual items, you can filter collections, you can sort them, you can completely replace them, and you can also empty them. So in terms of how to use collection variables specifically with flow, you can use the assignment element to add or remove individual items. You can also set one collection variable to equal another collection variable, or you can use the assignment element to remove all items like I said earlier. These days, you can use a decision element to check if a collection contains a certain item or if the collection is empty. Now, if you want to dive into the individual items that make up a collection, you would need to use the loop element. That will give you the chance to perform operations as each individual item iterates through the loop. For a fuller explanation on how loops and collections work, see my loops video, which I will link here. Much like the loop element, you can only use collection variables if you're going to use the filter or sort elements, which basically do exactly what it sounds like they do. And finally, you can do a few other things if your collection variables are record collection variables. Let's check this out in Salesforce. Okay, here I have a record triggered flow that fires on my lead object whenever a lead record is updated in Salesforce. Basically, this flow checks if certain data is missing from that lead record. And if it is, it populates a quality control field that I've created on the lead object with the specific information that's missing. So here I'm using a decision element. More on these in another video. And then I'm using these assignment elements to actually populate that text field based on whatever information is missing. So to do that, I'm basically adding specific text strings together into one place so that when I update my Salesforce lead, I'll be able to show all of those strings in a single field. So to do that, we'll use a text collection. So here I have my text collection variable. This is the name, this is the type, and this checkbox means that it's not just a normal text variable, it's a text collection. So whenever you need to make a collection variable, always make sure this box is checked, otherwise it won't work the way that you expect it will. And so let's say I have a lead record that triggers this flow. When we get to this decision element, the first outcome is checking if that lead record is missing a title. So if it is, I'm taking that text collection variable and I'm adding missing title to that collection. Then I'm going down the rest of the flow and basically this link takes me back up to this decision element so that I can continue on to the next outcome. So if this lead is also missing an industry value, I'm using this assignment element to add missing industry to that text collection, right? And then same thing if my lead is missing an annual revenue value. I'm putting missing revenue into that text collection. So that finally, once my lead record is done processing, I can update that quality check field on my lead with all of the text strings in that collection.
So let's see it in action. Here I have a Salesforce lead. If we scroll down, you can see my lead is missing a title. They're missing an industry, but they happen to have an annual revenue value. So for my quality check field, the next time somebody updates this lead record, they should see a note saying that the title and the industry are missing. So let's trigger an update operation by just editing and saving. And here you can see I have missing title and missing industry. So let's go back to flow and see what's actually happening here. Let's check this out step by step by debugging the flow using that same lead record. Okay, let's quickly look at this. Our decision element is checking for our different outcomes. And the first outcome is whether our lead title is missing or if it's null, which in this case is true. Our assignment element is taking our text collection and adding that missing title string to that collection. So by the time we get back to our decision element to check for our missing industry, which in this case, we are missing an industry. Our second assignment element is adding that missing industry text to our text collection, which already has the missing title. And that's just one way that you can use collection variables in your Salesforce flows. So I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please give it a thumbs up. And for more videos like this, be sure to subscribe. Thanks.